Hi, I'm Adam Craig, uh, also known on Facebook as Adam C. I am a part-time teacher, dancer, organizer out of LA, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience with Zook Family. Now, before I get started, if you're not already in the group, please come join us in Zook Anon. It's a new Facebook group that is designed to have an open and in-depth discussion about Zook, Zook events, Zook culture, and the latest things that are happening in the Zook world. Okay, Zook Family. So first, what is Zook Family? It is a uh, spiritual and Zook event that's organized by Sasha Eversnap, who's based out of Spain. And currently it takes place in a somewhat secluded retreat. Uh, sort of, uh, it's, oh, it's called the, the Ozen Rajneesh Holistic Retreat Center. It's about an hour south of the Cancun airport, just inside the edge of the jungle. There is some controversy about Ozen. Uh, so much so that there's even a Netflix docu-series called Wild Wild Country by the Duplass Brothers. But you'll have to dig, dive into that rabbit hole on your own because I haven't done a lot of research, but there is a history. You should know about it if you're uh, inclined and interested. Okay, but Zook Family. Simply put, it's just a series of wellness classes slash activities during the day and all night socials during the night. Basically, Interfusion meets jungle camping with a pinch of Burning Man meets a, a marathon. Okay, so I'll just do a broad overview of the timeline and then I'll get into the pros and the cons. The timeline for me, uh, I landed in Cancun at about three. I was in customs for a couple hours, their, their computers were down. And then I got in the transport van for the event around 6.30 or so. And I ended up in my room at about eight. So that should give you a sense of the timeline that it takes to get from the airport to your room. At least in my case, that was how long it took. Side note, the transport van is a very convenient offering. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's a third party vendor that charges a flat rate of about $70 when I went. And then you just split that cost with the uh, other attendees that are in that specific van with you. So it might cost you 70 bucks. It might cost you 15 bucks. It just depends on who all joins you. But considering the convenience, I think it's well worth the money. So anyhow, I got to my room at around eight. There are two types of rooms. There's two people rooms and four people rooms. Uh, if you have a partner that you're going to the event with, then you can request to, to share the room with your partner. Uh, otherwise, you'll just be sharing a bed uh, with a stranger, like someone that, that you may not know. Um, because it is, all that being said, uh, they assume that there will be two people in every bed. There are four person rooms, obviously those have two beds. And then so within Ozen, there are four types of room. Now there is a second option for an offsite hotel. And in those hotel rooms, they're assuming that there would be four people in a room. So again, two beds, two people per bed. Where I was staying was about a quarter mile or 400 meters from the main dining hall. So that means each time that I wanted to go to a social, I had about a quarter mile hike there, a quarter mile hike back. But when I went there for the first time, it was at night, got a little lost, but it was fine. Uh, it was just in time for the first team meetings. Now the teams are groups of people that have been assigned by the organizers to handle different sorts of tasks. Uh, there are many examples of the, of the of teams, but the team that I was assigned to uh, uh, was the cleanup and organization team. Anyhow, after the meetings, we were all asked to attend an opening ceremony where we learned a short dance and, and performed together and sort of bonded in that very first moment. We even listened to a, to a speech from Sasha. One of the visions behind Zoo Family is co-creation. As you've already experienced right now, everything that's been done around you is by people who are sitting next to you. And then we started the night with a drum performance that lasted roughly two hours. Um, for me, on this first day, at this point I was tired. I went to the dining hall, checked my email, because that's where you have the internet, is in the dining hall. Um, and then I called it a night. Generally speaking, the, the daily flow was you have a choice of classes from about 8 a.m. to about 9 p.m. And those classes included shibari, uh, movement classes, polyamory, discussion groups, lap dance classes, there's uh, massage classes, and uh, there's a plant medicine ceremony called hapa, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, but hapa, it is a uh, it's a nasally ingested tobacco mixture, um, but that was uh, presented in a plant medicine ceremony. And there are two of those. Uh, very intense. If you're into that, worth trying out. Uh, there's even a Timascal ceremony, which is in effect a sweat lodge. But the way they do it at this place is they, they heat marble stones and they carry them into sort of a 
tented hut. And you sit in there for hours and it's a guided experience with other attendees. And it is both a physical and mental challenge that is extraordinarily intense, but in my opinion was worth the, it was worth the struggle. Uh, but anyway, there are lots of ceremonies and performances um, that were often interesting or entertaining, but unfortunately they were oftentimes at the expense of social dancing. I didn't mind it that much, but there were some who were particularly irked that we would uh, be giving up a couple hours of social dancing to watch, uh, you know, fire spinners or a band play or, you know, something, you know, activities like that. Uh, but let's talk about food. There were three meals that are provided and then there's snacks after that. You should know that the facility is vegetarian only. In fact, there is there is a written rule that there is no meat allowed on the grounds. And if you were caught, uh, that there would be severe consequences. I don't know what that meant. I didn't want to find out. But just know if, uh, if you're food sensitive, then you should consider bringing sealed snacks with you. Now, the reason why I say sealed is because uh, if it's not sealed, the ants will find it. But anyway, the, the food to me was, it was good. And if there was something that came out that was not particularly appetizing for me, there was usually some salt and pepper or hot sauce or some something to kind of doctor it up to make it taste better to me. But I'm not particularly food sensitive. So if you are, that's something to be mindful of. So given that you're in the jungle, bugs are something that you just have to, to uh, deal with. Personally, I wore insect repellent daily, so they weren't a huge issue for me. But there were tarantulas and mosquitoes and ants and all kinds of things that, that crawled and flew. Some of them were pretty and some of them were not, not so much. Uh, one of the days I was walking back and I heard just sort of like the little, it's almost like a campfire that's been going for a while. And you're like, and then, uh, and I looked at this big pile of leaves and it turns out it was covered in ants. And so I was just fascinated kind of watching it for a second. And then like with my phone, I kind of followed where they were. And then lo and behold, they were on my legs. And so I had to like brush them off real quick. Fortunately, I didn't get bitten or anything. I just brushed them off and I was, and I was fine. One of my friends did get bit by ants and uh, it was not a pleasant experience. Now, some people have asked me about the tea, right? Like, like, okay, what's the real deal? What really happens out there? And I'll say for me, uh, it was a mixed experience. There's definitely some pros and some cons. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of cycle between the two so it doesn't seem too overly positive or overly negative. So let's start with a, with a pro. Because it's invite only, there were a tremendous amount of experienced dancers that made for great dances were very easy to, to get. Like just the hit rate was incredible. Lots of great dancers. Well, you can't beat that. That's, I mean, that's why we're all there. One of the cons, and this actually kind of seeped through a lot of different layers, which is the sort of VIP sort of aura of um, of much of the event. Like like there like there's definitely like classes of people, uh, and then if you're VIP, you're in one class, and if you're not VIP, then you're in a lower class, and then sometimes you can be even lower than that depending on your social your social structure. An example was uh, there was at one of the ceremonies at one of the at the cacao ceremony like. We, we were told early on that if you are a VIP, then you can sit in the first three rows. Everyone else had to sit in the back rows. And then um, just as time went on, uh, as people kind of filled in, like of course, you know, I was one of the early people and I was sad we're supposed to. And then uh, as time filled in, then it became apparent that it wasn't actually the VIPs that ended up there. It was just people that had managed to uh, cozy up again with the with the organizer, unfortunately, because I know some of these people. Um, so like that just kind of put a like a, a rough taste in my mouth, and um, and just the the like there was like a lounge that was labeled for VIPs, and then like that like that's where they would be, and then so there it was just sort of you know, um, it just wasn't quite what was sold to me as far as like uh, sort of a Burning Man mentality. Like that's that's one pitch going into it was like, hey, this is this is like sort of Burning Man esque. We all contribute. We're all responsible for it. We're all going to have um, have a great time. Well, I've been to Burning Man. I've been to a couple burns, and they are um, this was very different because there's a their concept at Burning Man that is like radical inclusion. Like no one's sort of, no one's sort of voyeur. Like you're 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 engaged in all of the things at all the times. There's not this like super like hierarchy sort of thing. So like the sort of red velvet sort of VIP thing 
just rubbed me the wrong way. It was not something that I particularly enjoyed, though I think I'm, maybe I'm just more sensitive to it than others, so maybe that would not be a big deal for you. Okay, let's talk about a pro. Pro were, was the uh, the lineup of DJs was was fantastic, and more so than just good DJs, the the environment allowed for them to be relaxed. So they often played more more interesting song choices and interesting mixes than what I would typically hear at a congress or a weekender or you know a, a more standard event. Let's do a con. So one of the cons was um, uh, well my team assignment. So I was on the uh, cleanup and organization team and we kind of got the short end of the stick a little bit. It was a new team this year and our responsibility was not necessarily to go clean up behind everyone, at least that's what we were told, but uh, we, yeah, we, we were to, sort of to help manage the cleanliness of the area as well as maintain the dance floor. So this presented a couple challenges um, where I think people knew that there was a cleanup team, and so they kind of took advantage of it. Unfortunately, so so it was it was a team that we sort of a lot of us had to work constantly. Uh, at least the the ones that decided to sort of stick with the team. Some people just sort of bailed off the team, and then of course that left more more heft for the rest of us. Okay, so in one of the main halls, it is called the Buddha Hall, and it it has a vinyl roof over the top of it. Well, during a social, there are a lot of people moving around and they're generating heat. The heat rose to the ceiling, it condensates up there, and then it rains, <laughs> drops water on the inside of this structure. And it was our team's responsibility to like go around and mop up the floors. And of course, it's difficult to see. So you sort of have this tricky task of finding invisible puddles in the middle of people dancing and hit, hit it with towels and squeegees, but not disturb people. It was a whole thing. Um, it was definitely a challenge. And uh, we just got the short end of the stick. It was it was a rough team to be on, and it very much colored the experience because I think all in all, I paid about two thousand dollars to to go to this, and I was not intending to spend you know thirty hours um, with a squeegee and a mop or a towel or a br or whatever like in my hand cleaning up behind people and like you know dealing with all that. A pro uh, is the facility itself is beautiful. I mean, it really is remarkable. Like the in the main hall I was just talking about, it's a big white marble floor. I don't know how many square feet it is, but it is huge. It, it's I mean, it's the size of like a hotel conference, like a opened up hotel conference room. It's huge marble, beautiful. And then there are many different uh, sort of areas that are also just equally beautiful. Uh, so that is just a, a pretty place. And a matter of fact, many of the videos that you might see from there are in various areas around the, the ground. So that is also very nice. Um, okay, a con. Um, and this is a pro and a con. So uh, one of the pros is that they there were often surprises that were planned for everyone. So some of these surprises included a uh, surprise performance or a, uh, there was a night where there was, there was a pinata. Um, so this was a great surprise for, for the attendees unless you were on the cleanup team. <laughs> Because many of these surprises generated huge amount of uh, of waste that uh, that we had to clean up, you know. So the pinata, obviously, candy comes out. People get the candy. They open the wrappers, and they have, someone has chocolate in it. And then they just like put the chocolate on the you know put the wrappers on the ground. It attracts ants. Then suddenly, people are barking at us to go find all of the wrappers and clean it up. You know, it just really. Put it, but put a damper in things. That was, that was a damper in the experience. It was not great. Uh, let's do a pro. A pro um, is uh, some of the offerings. So similar to Burning Man, uh, a lot of people sort of offered, offered things like me. The classes were taught by attendees of the event, and one offering that I very much enjoyed was an art installation that uh, was like an interactive video art installation to where you can dance in front of this depth camera and then it would um, place you in like this virtual world and you can see sort of an artistic version of yourself dancing uh, on the video screen. Very cool, very nice. It was done by a, uh, uh, like a video artist out of New York. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed that a lot. So one of the cons that uh, a lot of people had to deal with were, uh, and I heard a lot about, and I felt a little bit of it, but I think some people got the brunt of it, were clicks. 
In our in our Zook scene, obviously we have a tendency to generate clicks because we a lot of us travel with one another or we'll see each other in multiple cities, but not everyone can go everywhere. And so there tends to create a situation of the haves and have nots. So that was a problem that was voiced to me through some people that were not um, frequent dancers with North American dancers. So they kind of got left on the outside and left sitting waiting for dances or having a hard time getting dances. So um, I think if you were to consider going to this in the future, that would be something that'd be an expectation to set of like, okay, do I know people that are going to this? Um, am I good at like making friends and like in this kind of a situation because if you are then i don't think that'd be a problem for you but if you struggle with it then that might be you know there are a lot of zook events there might be other there might be other things that might fit with you well um okay and then so i actually i'm going to double up on a con here a little bit because uh we're already kind of running long on this video but what i'll say is uh the last thing it was small but turns out to be huge a huge con <laughs> So, um, oh, and I forgot to mention, okay, I mentioned two things. So one is, um, I was saying a lot of things depend on your sort of social standing with the organizers. And it seemed to be, if you are close with the organizers and you tend to get better, uh, better housing, uh, better, a better tiered, uh, living situation, because there, there were definitely tiers at the resort. The resort itself has like tiered housing. Like there are definitely the ones you want and the ones you don't want. And then there's kind of a middle. I was in the middle, um, but in the one you don't want, like you kind of are living among the spiders and among the ants and the scorpions and all of that. Um, a close friend that, that I made was telling me about how, uh, like he watched uh, a series of ants dragging a dead scorpion under the door of his, uh, of his dwelling. <laughs> he was there and that's, you know, you just sleep among that. Um, so if you're used to the jungle and go with the jungle, no big deal. But if, but if you're a, a city person that is not interested in that kind of a thing, then, well, that would be a challenge. Um, uh, the, yeah, so that's just something to be, to be aware of. And the point reason why I mentioned that is the place where I was in my room, um, you, okay, let's talk about the room. So the room is just designed for, I mean, it's designed for a couple that are like comfortable with each other. It's similar to like Vegas rooms to where they have like a clear shower, a clear, like a clear door to the bathroom. And you're like, why would, why would you want a clear bathroom door? Well, this has a similar thing where it has a door where it's just got like sticks and all that. So depending on your roommate assignment, I did not know my roommate before I joined this. Uh, you, you get, you get familiar with your, with all the things of your roommate pretty quickly <laughs> so um that and uh you might run out of hot water like we ran out of hot water a couple of times um at the you know like during the event and like i said that's a small thing but when you want hot water and don't have it that is a significant quality of life uh thing that requires some adjusting uh like i said small thing but huge and Similarly, uh, like when I checked in, I checked on the first day, but for some reason they were already out of like of like towels. And then, so I didn't have any towels for the week that I was there. So I had to use uh, some of my clean clothes to dry myself. Um, so, you know, that can be a definite uh, quality of life struggle that uh, works against you. I mean, it works against the overall experience. But, um, but yeah, end of the day, what I recommend it, you know, it really, it's hard for me to say for you. For for myself, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on it. Um, I know that, I mean, I'll, I'll acknowledge that, that pulling together an event like this is a logistical nightmare. I, I think uh, leading up to it, there were multiple, like there's a Slack channel, a, a WhatsApp channel, and then there was a, uh, there's just so many different <laughs> modes of, there's just emails, there's all these modes of communication that were all happening all at once. And tons and tons of spreadsheets that you're invited to like it's tons of logistics to pull this off it's a it's a miracle that it that it was able to be uh pulled off at all so um so i applaud the people that put it together now is it an enjoyable experience for everyone and is it worth the in my case two thousand dollars i don't know 
I don't know. It's 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 tough. It's tough because uh, I have a, I think I just have a sensitivity to not being treated sort of equally, um, and I'm not particularly interested in like kind of like cozying up against you know with individuals to try to get better placement or a better you know that's just not my vibe. That's not what I'm into. Um, if that if those are huddles that or hurdles that you don't mind scaling or getting over or around then this might be a good fit for you. Um, it was uh, definitely an adventure that, that you know, I, I think I am glad that, that I did it once and then we'll see what happens. I, I, if I have a group of friends that are going next year, then I will definitely consider it. If not, then probably not. Okay, I try to keep it short. Hopefully this was useful and helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and come join the group. Zoo on. I'd love to see you. Thank you much, bye.